Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Exploring Careers. Today we're lucky enough to be joined by David and Jess from the team at Coach. Thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Great to be here, Mitchell. Thanks, uh, Mitchell. Why don't you get started? Might start with you first, Jess. Uh, who are Coats? Because I think most people would have a brief understanding about Coats and might think it's you know one thing, or they might have one singular idea in their head. Uh, but can you give us a bit of a background into who Coats are and, and what you do there? Yeah, so most of the time when people think of Coats, they're probably thinking of construction equipment hiring company. Um, but we also have an engineering solutions team, um, which is where David and I work at. So yeah, we're involved in equipment hiring in construction and engineering. Okay, awesome. And what does, I might start with you here, David, what does a typical day look like for you? So Jess mentioned engineering there which might you know catch people a bit off guard when you normally think of coats as you know purely hiring equipment which clearly isn't the case but can you talk to us about your role and what a typical day looks like if you even have a typical day uh, yeah so definitely every day is different um, so just I suppose a bit of background about what 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 the role is so our team or my team does um, temporary works engineering design so that's generally speaking, uh, designing temporary structures for supporting things that, that usually facilitate construction. So let's say you're building a big skyscraper or whatever, and you need to temporarily support some concrete slabs or walls, or you might have a big excavation in the ground that you need to support. Everything we do is temporary, and it usually, as I said, facilitates the construction. So that what that means is that it's a really fast-paced and dynamic environment. So usually our projects last for very short amounts of time, being temporary. Um, and what that means also is we have a little bit less time to plan and prepare for those projects too. So it can be pretty, um, I suppose, demanding, um, pretty high pressure um, sort of job. Um, but with that, you also get a little really dynamic sort of workplace as well. So no two days are the same, but generally speaking, um, the, um, the day would be something along the lines of review, reviewing what new projects have come in, um, uh, assigning those new projects to different engineers amongst the, the country. Now we're a national role, so that's assigning different projects to different engineers all over the country. Um, those engineers will then review that information, maybe contact our internal technical salespeople or potentially contact the customer as well. Uh, make sure the understanding the scope and the requirements is, is uh, fully understood um, and then start to formulate um, their solution or their design. Um, so we do the full project lifecycle right from the initial sales stage, right through to detailed design, certification, um, uh, pre-mobilization works, sending out to site, installation, on-site inspections, maintenance and operation while it's on-site, and then the decommissioning, the installation removal at the end of the site, at the, at the end of the job as well. Um, so depending on the project, what kind of project it is, and where we're up to in that project arc or that project life cycle, um, you might be working one day on a you know, conceptual design and a proposal with some, some pricing, or another day you're working right down to the nuts and bolts, detail and analysis and design and drafting, um, or another day you might be out on site having a look at the structure that's already been built, or the structure that's, that's maybe about to come down because the job's finished. Okay, awesome. Well, it definitely sounds like you uh, you keep busy and you got your hands full there. Uh, Jess, I might start with you here. What what sparked your interest in engineering? Was this something that you were you know always keen on? Was it something you were thinking while you were completing you know at high school and going through your schooling? Did it come to you later? Can you talk us, I guess, through your education and career journey and to this point and what sparked your interest in engineering? Yeah. So um, in high my subjects were primarily um, maths and science. I only had one subject outside of that and I really enjoyed it. So when choosing a career path, kind of the natural option was to go into engineering. Um, but looking back, I'd already always had a bit of a fascination with, you know, large structures, high rise buildings, bridges. Um, and I just really wanted to understand how that worked. So I guess what drove me towards the area was just wanting to gain an understanding um, uh, as well as like transport networks and stuff like that. So um, yeah, that's what led me into the area. Uh, and then civil in particular just stood out to me from all the other engineering streams because it's such a vast field, like civil is 
um, you kind of go into that and you can go into 50 different areas within the within the field so definitely that's why okay awesome and what about you David what's what's your kind of education and career background and what led you to, to this point um, so in terms of um, education um, so oh, well, so basically my interest that got me into engineering in the first place similar to Jess um, you know the types of subjects that I studied and the things that I interested I was interested in were very maths and science based um, that's sort of where my skills were and then naturally I gravitated towards those things and wanted to learn and know more about them um, so when I when I graduated from high school um, I got into university to study a bachelor of um, civil engineering so at that point in, in most people's study um, careers there it's quite broad and from there as just mentioned you can go in a number of different ways um, but one of the areas that I quite enjoyed and quite liked is more focused in the structural engineering field um, so I did that bachelor's degree, um, uh, graduated, um, and when it was time for me to join um, the workforce, my first action, my first job was actually with Coas. So I finished university, I took a year off, but then when I started jumped into the job market, um, I immediately picked up a job with Coats. Um, and then from there, Coats actually supported me to do further study. So I then um, gained a master's in environmental engineering to, to complement my existing um, bachelor's degree. And we use that because part of the temporary work that we do is uh, water treatment and management in my team as well. So that environmental degree um, assists me in, in delivering that, that part of my role as well. Okay, awesome. And that's interesting. And I might stick with you for that, David, because engineering is obviously a big industry, big field. There's no shortage of uh, organisations that you can go and progress your career with if you want to get into engineering. So what was it about Coates when you were you know, as you mentioned, you went to uni, took a year off. What was it about Coates that, that stood out and you thought, yeah, these are, these are the people I want to kind of kick up my career journey with? Um, yeah, pretty interesting because when I first, first started with Coates, but going back about 12 years now, I'm um, showing my age, uh, the, engineer, the Coates um, engineering department was not what it, what it is today, not even by a long shot. Um, in fact, I was really the first full-time engineer who worked for Coates. Uh, there was a few other engineers who were in the mix, but they were in management roles and, and, and weren't sort of like, um, you know, getting right down to the details of structural design, like, like I was employed to do at the start. So, and, and look, because, because of that, I, to be honest, I didn't really view Coates as a, you know, a top engineering company. Um, and I didn't know how long I was going to stay there because I thought I could get some experience and then move on to maybe a consultancy or maybe a construction company or, or you know, who knows what. That time, of course, like many of the viewers, probably wasn't, you know, uh, all that uh, clear on what my future career might look like. Um, but after I started, I was um, sort of a part of this growth story within Coates. So we started to build our capabilities and do bigger things and, and, and work with more interesting products and more interesting projects. The team started to grow. Um, I was given a lot more responsibility and a lot more um, opportunity. It let me travel the country, travel the world, move um, to other um, states as well within Coates as well. And a number of promotions and things were made available to me. So that's what's really kept me um, engaged with Coates is because um, all these opportunities popped up and all these new things for growth and development um, happened. Um, so that was probably a thing, thing that kept me at Coates where if you maybe asked me when I very first started with Coates, I might have said, well, yeah, I might be working somewhere else next year. Who knows? Yep. All right. Well, awesome. Well, it's great to see that they've obviously provided an environment where you can flourish and you want to stay. And as you mentioned, you've been there, I think you said 12 years, which is, which is fantastic. Now, Jess, we mentioned it off the top that uh, people, especially younger people who are still at school and aren't fully in the career space at the moment and thinking about business in Australia, might have a very singular vision or a singular idea about who coats are and what they do. And we mentioned that a lot of people might just think it's construction and equipment hire and that type of thing, which I know is not the case. Uh, but are you able to talk to us about some of those common misconceptions and preconceptions that people, especially younger Australians, might have about uh, coats and the industry which you operate in? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the first misconception is just um, that Coates isn't just involved in equipment hiring. Um, so, for example, that's actually what I thought before I joined the company. Uh, and it wasn't actually until I was taking the train through Circular Quay and I was looking over through Sydney CBD and I saw this huge excavation with these hydraulic coat-sized struts in the middle. 
and I was thinking, okay, that's a little bit more than equipment. Someone's had to choose the placement of those there. Um, so I did my research and that's how I found out um, what other areas Coates was involved in. So uh, it's the one thing I can definitely encourage is just um, do your research. <laughs> Um, definitely ask questions like if you see the company and you're not entirely sure have a look into it um, because groups like Coates they're involved in so many different areas structures, order, human hiring, um, site monitoring there's so many streams you can enter so um, yeah it's, it's definitely have a read the website and that area is always growing with Coates as well it's a huge company we've got members like David who are constantly looking forward to what technologies we can bring into the company and what we can make new within the industry. Okay, awesome. And no, I, I agree. I know that when we at Explore Careers started our partnership with Coates and working with Coates and somebody said, oh, you know, we're working with Coates, I was thinking, great, the equipment hire people. Uh, and it wasn't until I started working uh, together with you guys closely and looking into it, I was like, wow, look at all these amazing opportunities. I had no idea about uh, and all these you know wonderful career paths and different options that are available available to you but i thought that was just so amazing and uh, are you the same david when you're talking about your role and working with coats do you find that people are still kind of uh stuck in their head that coats is one thing when you know it's something else yeah it's been a lot harder to shift the mindset of the people than i thought it would be to be honest um, and you know, I, I sort of expected that to be the case when when I first started because you know, absolutely, we were, we were 99.9 percent a hire company, and the rest was engineering. Um, but the, the the landscape has changed uh, vastly since then. Um, but you speak to people out there in the in the industry, the, the people who are hiring excavators and things from us every day of the week, and they still don't know. There's still a huge amount of people who don't know, and there's the amount of times you you know you sit in a boardroom giving a presentation about your capabilities to a group of people in a construction company or a consulting engineer or something like that, and they and the response is we had no idea you guys did that. Um, that's that's still very very common for us, um, and you know I think we're certainly making big progress, but you know we're only only the very first steps of, of that journey from becoming just a hire company to a to a solutions based engineering company. Okay, cool. And well, hopefully interviews such as this and the work coats are doing with organisations like us at Explore Careers can start to, uh, I guess, change that conversation and, and let people know, especially younger Australians who are, you know, embarking on their career journey about all the wonderful career opportunities that are available and all the different pathways you can go down with coats, which I think is, as I mentioned, really interesting. Uh, now, you both sound very passionate, obviously, about your roles and what you're doing at coats. If you had to bring it down to one thing, which I know might be tough, uh, but what's your favourite thing about working at Coates? I might start with you here, Jess. Is there something that you really look forward to the most or a project that you're working on? Can you talk us through that a little bit? Well, that's kind of a tough decision. Um, yeah, probably what I look forward most to in the day is just that um, I don't know what project's going to come through the project log. Uh, I don't really wake up knowing what sort of work I'm going to be doing, especially um, I've been with the company a year and a half now uh, and e every single project that I've taken on has been a little bit different, which really allows for continuous working. Um, it's never really been a standard nine to five. Pretty much every day David has me knocking on the door asking questions because I'm learning something new um, and coming across something I haven't seen before. So that's probably my favourite part. Just um, you know, you don't know what to expect. It's always new, uh, and that's really create. It creates a really exciting um, workspace. Okay, awesome. And what about you, David? Are you the same as Jess, or something else? Yeah, well, I'll give you a different different point, um, but that's probably the thing that I would have chosen as well. What Jess said. Uh, but the other thing I think that, um, uh, and it's kind of you know coming from the same same space, is that it, it makes for uh, a lot of um, a lot of challenge in, in your work, right? So there's because you're always doing something new and something different, you're always always challenged to solve new problems and, and find a better way of doing things and, and be more you know be, be more you have to be effective in this business you've got to make your um your designs efficient effective you've got to make the cost effective you've got to make them attractive for the customer um or you won't like won't last very long so we're constantly being thrown all these different projects and requirements and trying to figure out how we're going to solve these best and how we're going to do this um, project better for our customers um, and that means you know constantly challenged and you're constantly learning all the time 
Okay, awesome. No, both great answers. Both great answers. So uh, I guess one thing I wanted to touch on as well was the work culture and I guess the work-life balance which Coates allows because I think that's something which is probably more so more important now than it ever has been before, especially uh, after what we've been through uh, in the country and obviously around the world over the past few years with COVID. I think bouncing out of that, people are now more conscious about the workspace that they're working in and make sure that they allow you to, whether it be work from home or maintain a healthy work-life balance. So I guess two-pronged question, uh, does Coates allow that? Is it a healthy and vibrant work culture? Uh, does it help you maintain a healthy work-life balance? And what do you get up to outside of work? I might start with you, Jess. Yeah, so um, actually I've probably experienced firsthand at how forward thinking the company is with allowing um, work from home and flexible working arrangements. Uh, so outside of work, I'm still studying my bachelor's. So um, I work part-time in the office and then um, other days I'm working from home or having uni days and the company is really flexible with um, allowing me to kind of choose which days depending on um, and then outside of work trying to maintain that balance I just pick up a lot of sport and a lot of distance running and I actually found that um, a lot of people in the team are actually in as well which uh, so it's kind of a common uh, outside of work hobby that we all have um, but yeah so it helps maintain that work-life balance um, but then also the company's really supportive with uh, encouraging your um, kind of educational pursuits as well on the side. Perfect, no, I'd love to hear that, love to hear that you know organisations especially as I mentioned now so more than ever allowing uh, their employees to maintain that healthy work-life balance and be flexible with what your life you know, is and understanding that your life isn't purely work and you're not purely focused on codes 24 seven. Uh, so that's great. What about you, David? What do you get outside, uh, get up to outside of work and you're happy with the flexibility codes uh, allowing you to live? Um, yeah, so yeah, the flexibility is great. I, I think that um, to be brutally honest, um, Coates probably traditionally was a little bit bit more old school in the way we thought about things and did things. So um, when the, the notion of work from home um, sort of became in, came into the mainstream, that was a bit of a learning cur curve for us at Coates. Um, but I'm quite happy and proud to say that um, uh, we sort of, I guess, moved into that with an open mind um, and, and actually have you know, form, formed ourselves as quite a quite a flexible um, uh, a work, workplace. So it's actually really great. So yeah, as, as Jess mentioned, working from home, um, a, a good good company culture because of that. Um, yeah, there's just I guess a lot of freedom and a lot of flexibility. Um, and I, I think a good work-life balance in terms of keeping our people, we're, we're extremely busy, don't get me wrong, um, but we're busy, busy to the point that, um, you know, we can stay engaged and, and be effective in our roles, but not so much that we're overwhelmed or overworked and, and having to do, you know, lots of overtime or anything like that. Um, we found quite a nice balance, I think, um, coming out the back end, hopefully, of COVID um, with, with all those things. So, yeah, so I think that um, we've actually sort of landed on our feet um, in that respect and, and, and we've resulted in a, a really, really positive place to work, which I, I really enjoy. Um, and um, yeah, leaving plenty of time for, you know, external pursuits, whatever you want to do outside of work. So for, for me, I'm a runner as well. So Jess and I are um, both, both pretty um, into our running, although um, very different approaches to things. Jeff, Jess runs fast, I don't. Um, <laughs> Um, and I, I run far and just doesn't. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he, he has fun running 100 kilometres and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, feel, I feel that because we're uh, we, uh, at the office here at Explore Careers are uh, training for the Melbourne Marathon at the moment and I'm really struggling where, and I'm getting left uh, behind by everybody else. They're just off, off of the races and leaving me crawling in a, in a cloud of their own dust. So no, don't worry, I fully understand that. Uh, now, another hot topic, uh, which, uh, you know, is really, I guess, in the media at the moment, everyone seems to be talking about, and it's a big point of interest for young Australians who are starting their career journey, is the future of work and wanting to feel 
safe and secure in the organisation and the industry that they're potentially going to be working in. So what would you say the future of work is going to look like? Because especially in the engineering space, you've mentioned a few times now how that's something which codes have been growing, especially over the past few years. So David, I might stick with you. What's the future of work going to look like for codes here, think with engineering specifically? Um, look, it's, it's certainly tough to say um, because although Coates is a really big company, we're, we're a fairly small department really, um, in, you know, growing up in a big company and then, you know, hence why we're still viewed as a hire company and not a, not a construction or an engineering company. Um, but um, because of that, because of that growth, it's very hard to predict where we're going to be in, in 12 months, 24 months, because the new opportunities sprout up at, in places where you maybe don't expect it because of a market need or because we realise, you know, here's a gap or here's an improvement that we can make. So I think that the type of um, environment that we have in the engineering team in Coates is going to become much more broad. We're going to bring in many more disciplines. Um, and we're also obviously going to, you know, gain in, gain in volume in terms of the stuff that, we, yeah, that is our core business at the moment. So I think that there's going to be lots more opportunities within codes going into the future. Um, there's going to be you know, a lot, lot more roles in site-based work and a lot more roles um, in, in office space as work as well. And then in leadership and management and, and various different things and, and related things as well, not just engineering, but we do a lot of work. We'll, we'll, we'll be requiring a lot of help in the spaces of things like um, occupational, health, occupational health and safety, um, uh, compliance, contract management, um, uh, IT, lots of different areas as well. So I think that the future is going to be very, very different to what it is today. Um, uh, in terms of, I suppose, um, job security and, 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 you know, feeling like you have a safe work environment. Um, so certainly we see no evidence to suggest that the Australian construction market or engineering markets are going to, um, you know, suffer any downward trends or anything like that. Um, we're heavily involved in infrastructure works and just looking at the forecast that infrastructure spend in all across the whole country. Um, it's, we're already at record, record levels right now and that's scheduled to grow over, over a number of years. So I, I expect that engineering um, and construction to be um, a really great place to sort of pitch your career or your studies at because there's a bright future there. Um, sure, there'll be disruptions and there'll be, um, you know, a lot of technology that comes in that takes, you know, that, that, you know probably um, may not take jobs away, but, but, you know, that replaces some, some human labour. Um, that's true in everything, it's certainly true in engineering. Um, we'll get, you know, better computer software, better, better systems to automate things and we'll become more um, uh, productive and more efficient. Um, but I also think that there's a very bright and long future for people who want to study engineering and, um, and sort of, I guess, STEM-based um, uh, careers. Awesome, no, and I like that you mentioned the, the tech uh, aspect there because I think it's something people immediately get scared of. Like, oh God, a, you know, robot's gonna come and take my job and you know, there's not gonna be many jobs in the future because it's all gonna be automated and everything. And I think people, as, as you kind of alluded to there, need to see it as more, it's gonna be a help. Yes, certain roles and certain things are going to change, but I think all in all, it's going to be a, a help and we need to look at the fact that uh, technology and automation is gonna uh, help all of us do our jobs better, more effectively and work in different ways in the future. Uh, Jess, I wanted to ask you the same question, slightly different angle, obviously, because you're a bit earlier in your career journey. You mentioned before that you're still studying while you, whilst you're working for Coates. Uh, so how are you feeling in regards to, I guess, that whole discussion, the future of work, and I guess sticking with Coates for the next, you know, five, 10, whatever it may be, years. David's obviously been with Coates 12 years. Are you see yourself in the same boat? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, it's definitely a relief looking around the team you work with and seeing people that have just worked with the company for years. Um, there's obviously a good reason why they're sticking around. Uh, so it's really a vote of confidence to myself that I chose the right company and industry. Um, but I've only been with Coates for a short amount of time, but I can already see whilst I've been here, um, just the the growth that's taken place within the team and the technologies we're using. So um, yeah, it's a really exciting space to be in. I feel really comfortable that um, it's a company that I can really grow my own career with and um, no day is going to be the same. 
Perfect. Awesome. And last question, I want to ask you both this, and I always like to leave these chats on this question. It'll be interesting to hear both your thoughts, just because, as I mentioned before, you're at different stages of your career journey. Uh, What advice would you give to, I guess, young Australians or secondary school students watching this who are currently going through, you know, year 9, 10, 11, 12, because it's obviously a very stressful time because you're asked to make a lot of big future decisions when you're realistically you know you're a teenager you're 16 years old you're more worried about different parties coming up on the weekend and who's playing who in the football or whatever it may be but at the same time you're being asked what are you going to study what subjects are you going to choose and it's can be very stressful i know i'm 30 now but i know when i was back at school it was like well just give me a minute to to settle and you can feel very stressed out. So knowing what you know now, Jess, what advice would you give to any students who are watching this and kind of living through that at the moment? Uh, Yeah, definitely my advice would just be, um, you don't know until you've started. Just go all in, give it a crack. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. You switch paths, that's fine. Um, but yeah, you just really got to get started. Um, I think one of the biggest things is just procrastinating and taking a step back because you're so scared of what the outcome will be. Um, but it's it's just going to delay what's inevitably going to happen anyway. Perfect. No, great advice. And what about what about you, David? You're obviously a little bit further down the track, so you might have a different viewpoint on it potentially. Um, yeah, I look quite similar, but um, you know, thinking back to my time at high school, um, I would just definitely say enjoy that time um, and you know all the parties and stuff and, and ha- getting to see your friends every day. All that that's great stuff, and I think you know take advantage of that. Really enjoy it. Don't put too much pressure on yourself because um, you know your marks at the end of your high school um, time they're not the be all and end all. Um, and as Jess said, you you can try one thing, and if it doesn't work out, that's fine. I, I've been fairly blessed to. Um, I've tried some things that worked out for me and that I've been able to find a lot of success in and happiness in. Um, but that doesn't have to be the, the way that everyone does it. You don't have to make a decision when you're 17 years old and, that's, and that sticks with you, with you for your entire life. Um, so, yeah, don't be afraid to, to try new things. Um, you know, don't, don't be scared by, you know, taking that plunge in um, that, that Jess sort of said. Um, try a few things, understand what, what you really are passionate about and what you really enjoy doing. Um, if you're going to do something for you know 40, 50 hours a week, you know that's, that's most of your waking life every week. Um, and bet you better do something that you enjoy. So um, yeah, so that's that's probably the advice that I would give. No, great advice. I think yeah, I couldn't agree more personally. I think you don't realise until you get a bit older just how much time you've got ahead of you, and you can try different things. And you know you'll, you'll fail at certain things, you'll be good at certain things, and that's completely fine. To give things a crack and see what works. And as you mentioned, David, there's always gonna be that one person or a couple of people, whether it's a friend or a sibling who seems to have everything worked out and they seem to have a very set path on, I'm gonna do this, this and this and have everything set up. And that's great. And if that's you, then fantastic. But by no means do you, if you're not in that boat, do you feel like, you know, I, I need to be the same as this person. I need to have it all figured out. Take the time, see how you go, try a few things and it, it tends to all work itself out in the future, that's for sure. But David, Jess, it's been so great chatting to you both today, hearing about both your personal career stories, what you both do at Coates, uh, what Coates are doing as a whole and breaking down some of those preconceptions and misconceptions uh, that people might have about Coates, of course. If you are keen on what David and or Jess had to say today, then you can visit the Coates profile on explorecareers.com.au. Uh, we'll leave all the relevant links down below. So if you are keen on what they've had to say and want to learn more about a career with Coates, uh, then we'll leave all those links down below so you can go and do your own investigating and see whether uh, starting your career with Coates is potentially the, the right path for you. But David, Jess, thank you so much for joining me today. Been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.